The story begins by showing a kind-hearted and hard-working woman named Jin Young Soon. She works at a fertilizer shop and is loved by all the customers for her friendly nature. One fateful day, Choi Hashik, the owner of a pig farm, brings a little pig as a gift and proposes to Young Soon. Overjoyed, she accepts his proposal and they embark on their journey together as a married couple. After tying the knot, Young Soon and Hashik join forces to take care of the pig farm. When Young Soon shares the news of her pregnancy, Hashik's face lights up with happiness. They begin saving money, preparing for the arrival of their little bundle of joy. Meanwhile, the village they reside in is gearing up for a grand marathon of Olympic celebration. Young Soon eagerly decides to create a supportive banner for the event. However, the organizers of the marathon have different plans. They want Hashik's farm to be dismantled to maintain the picturesque Olympic landscape. Hashik firmly refuses their request, which deeply offends the event organizer, Song Wubiak. As a result, under the cover of night, Wubiak's men maliciously set fire to the farm, leaving Hashik and Young Soon devastated. Determined to seek justice, they report the incident to the authorities, hoping for a resolution. The following day, while surveying the charred remains of his farm, Young Soon makes a startling discovery. She finds a cigarette butt similar to the one Wu Biak smokes, but unfortunately, it isn't enough evidence to implicate him. Wu Biak defends himself by claiming he distributed the same type of cigarette to multiple residents. The citizens who initially supported Hashik betray him after being intimidated by Wu Biak's side, causing Hashik to lose the trial. Despite the setback, Hashik refuses to give up. He meticulously pieces together recordings of testimonies, including his own, which he later hands over to the prosecutor in his case, Otasu. Regrettably, Tasu, the prosecutor, also turns his back on Hashik. One night, after receiving information from Tasu Wu Biak plots to eliminate Hashik by making it appear as if he has committed an unspeakable act. This incident deeply affects Young Soon, especially considering she is heavily pregnant. The following day, Young Soon encounters Tasu, who appears content after receiving a bribe from Wu Biak. In Taesu's room, he hands Hashik a savings book while urging Young Soon to accept their grim reality. Sometime later, Young Soon left to survive with her newborn baby, gathers her determination, and starts anew by opening a pig farm in a small village. Unfortunately, some residents of the village protested against the presence of the pig farm. During a meeting with the disgruntled residents, Young Soon experiences sudden contractions, and she eventually gives birth to a baby boy named Choi Kangho. To her surprise, the villagers who had protested against her farm rallied together to assist Young Soon during the birth. Shortly after, another resident named Jung Gunja, who was also pregnant, gives birth to a baby girl named Lee Maiju. The simultaneous birth of the two babies brings a sense of calm to the village. As the years pass, Kango grows up under Young Soon's strict educational guidance, with the hope that he will become a prosecutor and uncover the truth behind Hashik's death. Maiju, aware of this, feels sympathy towards Kangho. During their teenage years, while attending high school, a fellow student named Bang Samsik, who is from the same village, often exhibits signs of jealousy towards Maiju's attention towards Kangho. One day, an irritated Samsik notices Kangho entering the equipment storage room to study alone. Unaware that Maiju is also inside the room, celebrating her birthday with Kangho, Samsik locks them inside. While sharing kimbap with Kangho, Maiju realizes that he dislikes carrots. Shortly after, Maiju prepares to leave for her class, but realizes that the door has been locked from the outside. Unfortunately, no one hears their cries for help. Back at home, Young Soon prepares a special birthday meal for her son. However, as the night falls and Kangho doesn't return, she becomes worried. She reaches out to Sun Yongrak, the village chief, and asks him, along with some residents, to search for Kangho. Around the same time, Gunja informs Young Soon that Maiju has also not returned home. When they question Samsik, he immediately rushes to the school upon learning that Maiju and Kang Ho might be trapped in the gym storage room. In the meantime, Maiju grows increasingly frustrated with Kang Ho's relentless focus on studying. She confronts him, questioning why he isn't interested in her. However, Kang Ho remains unresponsive to her inquiry. Maiju decides to entertain herself by playing with a hula hoop while munching on candy, which unfortunately causes her to choke. In a panic, Kang Ho rushes to her aid, attempting to perform first aid. Simultaneously, Sam Sik and the other villagers reach the school and manage to open the locked room just as Kang Ho is hugging Maiju from behind while attempting to help her. 
This side angers Young Soon, who scolds her son and demands that he come home. Young Soon is deeply upset that Kang Ho skipped his exam, especially after discovering his feelings for Min Chu in his notebook, which contains a portrait of her. Some residents who overhear the scolding feel that Young Soon is being too harsh on her son. A while later, the day of the university entrance exam arrives. Kang Ho is seen off by his mother, who wishes him success. As Young Soon departs, Kang Ho encounters Min Chu, who has come to support him as they have been secretly dating. Minju decorates Kang Ho's nails for good luck and gives him a kimbap before bidding him farewell to return home. Suddenly, she is struck by a motorcyclist. Kang Ho decides to prioritize taking her to the hospital, forfeiting his opportunity to take the exam. When Minju regains consciousness, she cries, blaming herself for causing Kang Ho to fail the exam. Upon arriving home, Young Soom is furious with her son for sacrificing the university exams for the sake of others. That night, overwhelmed by his mother's constant nagging and feeling pressured, Kang Ho resolves to become a prosecutor immediately, hoping to gain independence and freedom from his mother's control. Several years later, Kang Ho successfully becomes a prosecutor, earning the title of the top graduate from his university. However, he transforms into a cold and detached prosecutor, aligning himself only with those in power. He even becomes a confidant of Wu Biok, the person responsible for Hashik's death. Due to Kang Ho's assistance in solving various cases, Wu Biok offers to grant him any request. Confidently, Kang Ho asks to be appointed as Wu Biok's adoptive son, citing his longing for a father figure he never had since childhood. Pleasingly, Wu Biok grants his request. At home, Young Soon exhausts herself preparing a vast amount of food all by herself to the point of nearly fainting. Concerned, she seeks treatment at Yong Rak's house. During a conversation with Yong Rak, Young Soon reveals that her relationship with Kang Ho has grown distant, with little to no communication between them. Kang Ho, who is now in a relationship with Oh Hae Young Tae Su's daughter, shows little interest in her. Even as Hae Young does her nail care, Kang Ho ignores her calls, causing her annoyance. Furthermore, Hae Young becomes even more upset when Meju, who works as a nail technician, accidentally injures her leg. In her anger, Hae Young scolds and kicks Meju. Feeling guilty, Maiju apologizes but also demands that Hae Young apologizes in return for kicking her. When Hae Young refuses, Maiju pretends to kick her, causing Hae Young to startle and fall. At a cafe, Maiju, who has nurtured a passion for nail art since childhood, shares with her colleague her dream of opening a private salon and reveals her intention to seek investment. Shortly after, Maiju receives a call from Gunja and her twins, Lee Seo Jin and Lee Yi Jin, who live in the village. Through their conversation, Maiju is compelled to lie to her mother, claiming that she lives in America with her husband and gave birth to twins who are currently under Gunja's care. Maiju promises to return to the village after achieving success and asks her mother to inform the other villagers that she has divorced her husband. However, Gunja hesitates to comply, fearing embarrassment if others discover that her daughter is divorced and that her grandsons are considered illegitimate. In the meantime, Sam Sik's parents, Mr. Bang and Park Sonny, express frustration over their son's imprisonment. On the other hand, Young Soon stays busy delivering food to her neighbors as she bids farewell to meet her son, who has achieved success in Seoul City. Unfortunately, upon arriving at Kang Ho's apartment, Young Soon is unable to meet her son as he refuses to see her. Before leaving, she is left with no choice but to leave the food with the apartment guard and provide her phone number, hoping that Kang Ho will contact her. At his apartment, Kang Ho reflects on his past as he attempts to establish a connection with Tae Su. Finally, he gets an opportunity to meet Tae Su after Tae Su delivers a speech at the prosecutor's graduation ceremony, where Kang Ho is introduced as the top graduate prosecutor of the year. Tae Su feels a sense of familiarity upon seeing Kang Ho as if they have met before. After becoming a prosecutor, Kang Ho makes efforts to get closer to the young. Their paths cross at a bar when Kang Ho arrests Hae Young on charges of drug possession. However, Hae Young is released due to a lack of evidence. The following day, Kang Ho meets Hae Young with a juju fruit, offering his sincere apology for the mistaken arrest. He explains that juju fruit can help alleviate anxiety, hoping Hae Young won't rely on addictive antidepressant drugs, as he has discovered in his investigations. This incident sparks Hae Young's growing affection for Kang Ho and their relationship progresses to a deeper level. Eventually, Hae Young introduces Kang Ho to Ta Su at her father's birthday party. 
Unfortunately, after ha and her mother leave, Taesu warns Kang-ho to end his relationship with his daughter. From that moment onward, Kang-ho completely avoids ha and asks her not to approach him, as he has other plans that may gain Taesu's approval of their relationship. On another day, Kang-ho reveals the results of a DNA test, proving that Taesu is the father of a baby born to his secretary, Wang Su Haiyan. With this evidence, Kang Ho proposes to Wu Biak that he raise the baby as a legitimate son. In exchange, Kang Ho offers to provide the DNA test proof to Wu Biak, which could force Tai Su to submit to him. This plan is intended to enable Kang Ho to marry He Young. The following day, with no other choice, Tai Su reluctantly agrees to accept Kang Ho as his son in law, on the condition that Kang Ho eliminates Su Haiyan and her baby. One night, Kang Ho appears to take Su Haiyan for a drive, but secretly he causes their car to sink into the river, erasing all traces of them. On the other hand, Mai Chu is thrilled to have successfully opened her dream nail art salon with her business partner. In the village, the neighbors of Young Soon are busy preparing to welcome Kang Ho, who is returning home with his future wife. The young feels nervous as they make their way to Kang Ho's house. Upon arriving in the village, Young Soon, dressed in her finest clothes, along with other villagers, eagerly welcomes Kang Ho's presence. However, Kang Ho appears distant and quickly reveals his true purpose. He asks Young Soon to sign a letter of consent for him to be adopted by Wu Biak. Though taken aback by the sudden request, Young Soon is forced to agree, especially when Kang Ho claims it was her long-cherished dream. Shortly after, Kang Ho bids farewell, returning the luxury items his mother had prepared for He Young. During their journey, Kang Ho suddenly stops the car and falls silent for a while. He Young offers him a drink and takes over the driving. However, when she stops the car to retrieve her flying scarf, a truck unexpectedly crashes into Kang Ho's car, sending it plummeting into a ravine. As a result of the accident, Kang Ho falls into a coma, and Young soon remains by his side, recalling how she pushed him so hard to become a prosecutor in the hope of uncovering the truth behind her husband's death. However, her current desire is simply for her son to awaken from his coma. Meanwhile, the accident raises suspicions in Wu Biak's mind, especially since He Young survives the incident. Aligning with Wu Biak's suspicions, He Young intentionally sedates Kang Ho and leaves him in the car, knowing that a truck will inadvertently crash into it. This is all part of Taesu's plan to alleviate his daughter's guilt and make her believe that the accident was not her fault. On another front, Sam Sik, who has been released from prison early, secretly meets Maiju before bidding her farewell as he sets off to work on a ship. The following day, when Samsik's parents anticipate celebrating their son's release, they discover that Samsik has deceived them once again, using the bail they provided to secure his early release. A few days pass, and Kang Ho finally awakens from his coma. However, he is faced with the devastating news of paralysis and memory loss, causing him to behave like a seven-year-old child. Wanting to keep the circumstances surrounding Kang Ho's condition a secret, Young Soon secretly takes him back home and becomes his primary caregiver. As word spreads among the residents about Kang Ho's condition, they feel deep sympathy for Young Soon, who continues to blame herself for her son's misfortune. One day, Kang Ho consistently refuses to eat until Young Soon scolds him. He mentions his mother's previous instruction not to eat too much, as it would make him sleepy while studying. Young Soon, Overwhelmed with guilt, cries and apologizes for her harsh treatment, urging Kang Ho to eat. In the meantime, Wu Biak's men initiate an investigation into the truck driver who collided with Kang Ho. However, they discover that the driver has committed a reprehensible act in his room, further fueling Wu Biak's suspicions regarding Taesu's involvement in trying to eliminate Kang Ho. Back at home, Kang Ho starts making efforts to train his hands to move again, alongside his eating progress. On the other hand, Maiju experiences a setback as her business partner runs away with the money from their nail art salon, leaving her frustrated and distressed. After several days of Young Soon teaching Kang Ho how to use his hands again, he finally succeeds and is able to eat independently for the first time since his paralysis. This accomplishment brings Kang Ho immense joy, as he can now venture outside in a wheelchair. He happily interacts with Seo Jin and Di Jin, whom he sees as his playmates of the same age. Back at home, Young Soon tries to help Kang Ho understand that he is a 35-year-old man who has been given the opportunity by God to experience childhood once again until he regains his memories. At the same time, Mai Ju, who has lost her money due to her business partner's betrayal, searches for the person who ran away with the funds. 
Along the way, she visits a sushi shop that triggers memories of her time working with Kang Ho at the store while she was studying to become a prosecutor. Their paths had crossed once again, leading them to rekindle their relationship and decide to stay together. However, when Kang Ho graduates and becomes a prosecutor, Man Ju chooses to leave him, which fuels her lingering resentment toward him. When Kang Ho continues his routine visits to the hospital for therapy, he becomes frightened whenever he doesn't see his mother by his side. Young Soon does her best to reassure him, emphasizing that she will never leave him. Meanwhile, Wu Biok, who has obtained a video of the truck driver's wife's testimony, confronts and threatens Ta Su. He also presents evidence of Ha Young purchasing sleeping pills prior to Kang Ho's accident. During their encounter, Wu Biok reveals that he already knows Kang Ho's true identity as Hashik's son. However, he doesn't care about Kang Ho's intentions in approaching him, as long as he can exploit Kang Ho for his own gain. A few days later, Young Soon seeks assistance from some residents to help take care of Kang Ho, as she needs to handle matters at his apartment. Kang Ho feels scared when his mother leaves, but Seo Jin and Yi Jin come to invite him to play, providing some comfort and distraction. While packing her son's belongings in the apartment, Young Soon accidentally discovers a hidden closet containing important files belonging to Kang Ho. Curious, she decides to visit Kang Ho's office to retrieve his belongings, and as she encounters a group of people protesting against Kang Ho. It is then that Young Soon learns that her son has gained a reputation as a ruthless prosecutor. On the other hand, Kang Ho continues to play with Seo Jin and Yi Jin, and sudden flashes of memory lead him to recite certain passages. However, in his enthusiasm, he accidentally breaks the twins' ball. On her way home, Young Soon is involved in a minor accident with a man named Bak Huna, who is planning to move to the village. Bak Kun Ah exaggerates the incident and threatens to press charges against Young Soon. During their confrontation, Young Soon accidentally discovers gold hidden among Kang Ho's belongings that she brought home. This discovery raises doubts in her mind about whether her son has truly become a corrupt prosecutor who accepts bribes. Disappointed, Young Soon arrives home and confronts Kang Ho, blaming herself for his misguided upbringing. Kang Ho, still unable to regain his memory, feels confused and wonders if he is a bad person. On the other hand, Mind Chu grows increasingly frustrated as people continue to hold her accountable for her partner's actions. She reaches out to Sam Sik to share her sorrow and reveals her plan to return to the village. Filled with guilt, Kang Ho embarks on a quest to find Siu Jin and Yi Jin's lost ball. After searching in various places, he eventually discovers the ball at night and rushes to the twins' house to return it. However, when he knocks on the door, Mai Ju, who has returned to the village, opens it and is taken aback to see Kang Ho. She quickly sends him away, leaving Kang Ho fascinated by her presence. He tells Young Soon that his heart is pounding after seeing a beautiful woman he doesn't know. In the meantime, Mai Ju shares her encounter with Kang Ho with Gun Jia, who in turn informs her about Kang Ho's condition. Gu Jia expresses sympathy for Kang Ho, but advises the twins not to interact with him. That night, Maiju apologizes for burdening her mother with her problems, and Gunja tries to provide comfort and reassurance. The next day, Kango sets out once again to return the ball to the twins, and along the way, he feels joyous upon catching sight of Maiju from a distance. In the meantime, Huna reports Young Soon to the farm service by filing a complaint against her pig farm. Consequently, a farm service officer contacts Young Soon while she is traveling to the city. Kango, who accompanies his mother on the trip, requests to have a pet in the hopes of catching Maiju's attention, but Young Soon refuses his request. Ha Young still carries a burden of guilt towards Kang Ho, despite the time that has passed since his accident. She was manipulated by Ta Su, who claimed that Kang Ho had cheated on her and had children. Back at home, Kang Ho continues to plead with Young Soon to let him have a pet. In an attempt to win Maiju's affection, he brings a little pig from the farm to show her. In the village, the women are delighted to receive nail care services from Menchu. However, Seo Jin and Yi Jin feel saddened by the prohibition against meeting Kang Ho. But then, Kang Ho appears before them, holding his pet pig. Suddenly, the pig escapes, leading the three of them to chase after it. Their pursuit causes Hu Na, who is driving, to almost have an accident as they run onto the highway. Fortunately, Mai Ju manages to catch the little pig before it can go any further. Shortly after, Young Soon arrives, and Kang Ho and the twins, who are not allowed to play together, decide to run away. During this encounter, Young Soon is delighted to meet Mai Ju and makes a stop at Gumja's house before tending to other matters. 
Once back at home, Young Soon cleans Kang Ho's little pig to prevent any potential illnesses. After hearing her son's sincere plea, she allows Kang Ho to keep the pet. The following day, Young Soon faces further troubles as Huna blames her for the damage to his car, citing the near accident caused by Kang Ho in the middle of the road. Huna reports Kang Ho to the police and demands his imprisonment. However, Kang Ho cleverly defends himself by making a phone call while driving, catching Huna violating traffic laws. This maneuver leads the police to release Kang Ho. Meanwhile, Tai Su grows increasingly concerned that Kang Ho may become an obstacle to his career. He orders his men to eliminate Kang Ho. That night, a mysterious intruder breaks into Kang Ho's home while he is alone. Fortunately, two of Wu Biok's men, Sub Ji Siok and Che Son Nian, who have been hiding in the house, come to Kang Ho's aid and apprehend the intruder. Back at home, Young Soon is taken aback by the state of her damaged house. Kang Ho recounts the incident with the mysterious intruder and explains how the two men emerged from the closet to fight him. However, Young Soon finds it hard to believe her son's story and continues to think that Kang Ho is simply acting out. The following day, upon learning about the attack, Wu Biak instructs his men to protect Kang Ho and retrieve Tai Su's DNA test documents. Worried about the outbreak affecting several pig farms, Kang Ho expresses concern for his mother's farm. However, Young Soon reassures him, explaining that all the pigs on their farm have been vaccinated. Shortly after, Young Soon invites Kang Ho to go to town, but he declines, choosing instead to play with Seo Jin and Yi Jin. At Gunja's house, Mai Ju is deeply moved when her mother sacrifices her savings to support her dream of opening a nail art salon. Filled with enthusiasm, Mai Ju boards a bus to the city, unaware that she has dropped her wallet. Meanwhile, Kang Ho, who spots the dropped wallet, quickly retrieves it and sets off to catch up with Mai Ju. In another part of the city, Young Soon distributes food to people protesting against Kang Ho at the prosecutor's office. She also buys shoes for Kang Ho, hoping that he will be able to walk again. Mai Ju, unaware of Kang Ho's presence, searches for a shop to rent for her nail art salon. Unintentionally, her kindness towards an elderly woman at a fertilizer store leads her to a place that offers a highly affordable rental fee, allowing her to open her salon. In the meantime, Kang Ho wanders around in search of Mai Ju and becomes interested in trying on a bag. Suddenly, a thief attempts to snatch Mai Ju's wallet from Kang Ho's hand. In a swift move, Kang Ho throws an apple at the thief, causing him to stumble and drop the wallet. However, things take a turn when a bag seller accuses Kang Ho of stealing the bag he tried on without paying for it. Min Ju steps in to defend Kang Ho and takes him back to her place. Later, they meet up with Young Soon, and the three of them head home together. Upon their arrival in the village, Young Soon leaves some herbal medicine for Gumja in Mai Ju's care, apologizing for her past rude behavior. Before heading home, Mai Ju encourages Young Soon to stay strong, believing that Kang Ho will soon recover his health. Meanwhile, Huna, a trot song composer who had a difficult upbringing in the village, tries to rally the residents, including his childhood friends, against Young Soon and her pig farm. Unbeknownst to him, Young Soon overhears his words, leaving her saddened. However, she resolves to stay strong for the sake of Kang Ho. That night, Kang Ho sits by the riverbank, fishing for a fish to give to Meiju. Sam Sik, who has recently returned to the village, spots Kang Ho and is reminded of Kang Ho's past rude behavior including his refusal to help Samsik, which led to Samsik's imprisonment. Samsik approaches Kang Ho, but Kang Ho doesn't remember him and becomes irritated by Samsik's disrespectful behavior. Feeling frustrated, Kang Ho seeks help from Seo Jin and Yi Jin, who invite him to have dinner together, despite Mai Ju's objections. Back at his own house, Samsik reflects on his past actions and regrets the harm he caused to Kang Ho, upon learning more about Kang Ho from his parents. At Maiju's house, the twins initially enjoy the presence of Kang Ho, feeling as if they have a mother and father figure with them. However, Maiju becomes increasingly annoyed by this, causing the twins to retreat to their room. Maiju accidentally includes a carrot in Kang Ho's food, knowing that he dislikes carrots. Kang Ho apologizes for not being able to catch fish for Maiju and asks about her husband. Maiju's irritation grows, and she drives Kang Ho away leaving him grieving and wondering if he has done something evil to her in the past. Meanwhile, the neighbors of Young Soon feel sorrowful after recalling her kindness and decide not to participate in Huna's plan to expel her. That night, Ji Siok and Sung Yeon continue their search for important documents in Kang Ho's house. 
When they encounter Young Soon, they nervously lie, pretending to be new residents who are planning to open a field in the village. Suddenly, Young Soon collapses, and the two henchmen swiftly take her to the hospital. The following day, as Huna prepares to demonstrate in front of Kang Ho's house, he realizes that the other residents are not joining him, as they don't want to betray Young Soon, who has been a long-standing member of the village community. At the hospital, Young Soon receives devastating news from the doctor that she has stage 4 gastric cancer. She pleads with the doctor to save her life, expressing her desire to live for her son. Kang Ho and Yang Rak accompany her, and Kang Ho approaches his mother as she comes out of the doctor's room, only to witness her collapse. However, instead of seeking comfort, Young Soon urges Kang Ho to stand on his own feet before passing away. In the village, Ji Siok and Sung Yan purchase land from Sung Ae to protect Kang Ho and continue their search for the documents that Wu Biok desires. When Sam Sik sees his mother meeting with Wu Biok's henchman, Sung Ae, who has acquired some money, hastily hides it, fearing that Sam Sik will take the money from her. In the following days, Young Soon's mood swings continue to affect Kang Ho, who becomes increasingly worried about his mother's condition. One night, Young Soon breaks down in tears, refusing to give up on her illness because she believes Kang Ho still needs her desperately. The next day, Kang Ho discusses his mother's change of attitude with the twins and expresses his concern about not being able to play with them due to Mai Ju's prohibition. As they talk, Young Soon appears with a cheerful face, inviting Kang Ho to go to the market to buy shoes. At the market, Kang Ho is targeted by some mischievous students who bully him. When he returns home, Young Soon teaches her son to have the courage to curse back at those who bully him, so he won't be an easy target. She also gives Kang Ho his savings in the house certificate, emphasizing the importance of not easily lending them to anyone. On another occasion, Young Soon teaches Kang Ho various skills related to caring for pigs on their farm and gardening, passing on her knowledge and skills to him. After her encounter with Sam Sik and witnessing Xiu Jin's longing for a father figure, mind you, feels the weight of their chaotic economic situation. She tries to make Sam Sik aware of the reality and the challenges they face, realizing that marriage may not be a viable solution. Upon returning home, Manju finds Seo Jin in tears because she wants to experience the same things her friends with fathers do, like going to the men's bath. Manju comforts Seo Jin and tries to explain the situation to her, reassuring her that they are still a loving family. In the meantime, Young Soon's illness continues to worsen, but she tries to hide it from Kang Ho, not wanting him to worry. As she goes to the farm, she discovers protest boards set up by Huna, who wants her to leave the village. Anchored by Huna's actions, Young Soon confronts him and sternly warns him not to cause trouble, asserting that she won't be easily swayed by his demands. Tragically, farm service officers arrive at Young Soon's farm and decide to euthanize all the pigs, despite none of her pet pigs being infected with the virus that affected other farms. The incident brings back memories of the previous fire at the pig farm, adding to Young Soon's desperation. The residents who witness this unfortunate event can only mourn the disaster that has befallen their neighbors. That night, Ji Siok and Sun Yan sneak into Kang Ho's house once again, hoping to find something important. After searching, they finally discover a flash drive hidden away. Meanwhile, Taz who enjoys a luxurious dinner at a fancy restaurant and plans to set up his daughter with the hair of the dosing group. He believes this match will help her gain support from influential businessmen as he aspires to run for president. The next day, Mai Ju is at work when she receives news that Young Soon is buying pesticides. Worried about what Young Soon might do, Mai Ju rushes home to intervene. On the other hand, Young Soon, after purchasing the pesticide, invites Kang Ho to visit Ha Shik's grave. She feels desperate and abandoned by the people who have left her, contemplating her life struggles as she holds the bottle of poison. Kang Ho, witnessing his mother's struggle, steps in to help her open the bottle. At that moment, he shares his hopes for their future, touching Young Soon's heart and making her reconsider her decision to consume the deadly liquid. When they arrive home, they find Mai Ju waiting for them. They quickly take away the pesticide Young Soon bought and discuss plans for Kang Ho to go to the men's bath with Siu Jin and Sam Stick the next day. Later that night, Young Soon calls Song Ye and Gunja to her house and gives them the luxury items she had intended to give to Kang Ho's future wife. The neighbors find Young Soon's behavior strange, but they don't question her about it. The next morning, Kang Ho is thrilled about going to the bathhouse with Sam Sik and Siu Jin. Meanwhile, Young Soon goes to the attorney's office to take care of some legal matters regarding the property she wants to give to Kang Ho. 
She then picks up Kang Ho from the public bath with the intention of taking him to the hospital for therapy to help him regain his ability to walk. However, once they arrive at the hospital, Young Soon plans to leave Kang Ho there alone. Kang Ho becomes frightened and begs his mother not to leave him, promising that he will get better soon. Despite his pleas, Young Soon decides to go back home, leaving her son behind at the hospital. Kang Ho is left to figure out a way to get home by himself. After a long and arduous journey, Kang Ho arrives at his house, only to be shocked by Young Soon's unthinkable act. Overwhelmed with emotion, Kang Ho cries and desperately tries to stand up to save his mother. Through sheer determination, he manages to regain his ability to stand, causing Young Soon to abandon her intentions. Seeing her son's miraculous recovery brings joy to Young Soon's heart. However, Kang Ho, still in a state of shock, chooses to leave the house despite the heavy rain outside. Tears streaming down his face, he encounters Meiju, who offers him shelter and assures him that Young Soon would not abandon him without reason. This encounter triggers memories for Meiju of when Kang Ho left her without explanation in the past. Soon after, Young Soon finds Kang Ho and brings him back home. However, her son appears disappointed in her actions. She explains that she did not want to burden him and asks Kang Ho to try standing on his own again. It becomes clear that Kang Ho still requires therapy to fully recover. In a daring act, Young Soon takes Kang Ho to the river and throws him in, urging him to rely on his own strength to stand. In the following days, Kang Ho diligently attends therapy sessions until he finally regains the ability to stand and walk. This achievement brings immense joy to Young Soon's heart. Deeply remorseful for their previous thoughts of expelling Young Soon, Yang Rak, and the other villagers decide to make amends by purchasing an advanced wheelchair as a gift for Kang Ho. To their surprise, Ji Siuk and Sun Nian, who had initially planned to investigate Kang Ho's house, have grown close to the villagers and become successful lettuce farmers. One day, while Mai Ju is at work, she receives a call from Siu Jin informing her that their father is at home. Hurriedly, Mai Ju rushes back and finds her friend, who is actually a debt collector seeking repayment. After a heartfelt conversation, Mai Ju lies to her family, saying that their father must leave for America immediately, causing sadness for the twins. In light of this, Gunja suggests they visit Kang Ho's house, where the villagers have prepared a surprise gift for him. When the villagers gather in front of Young Soon's house, they are astounded to see Kang Ho walking. Their joy knows no bounds, and they celebrate together with a communal feast. Manju, witnessing Kang Ho's restored ability to walk, finds herself somewhat conflicted. In a chance encounter, Kang Ho greets her, stating that the person who left her never truly abandoned her. Manju ponders over his words, contemplating their deeper meaning. The scene turns to Young Soon, who makes her way to Huna's house, carrying food as an apology for the songwriter's absence from Kang Ho's foot healing celebration. She takes the opportunity to confide in Huna about her illness, pleading with him to keep it a secret and urging him not to take away the pig farm that will eventually belong to Kang Ho. Huna, overcome with guilt, falls silent, his remorse evident. In the meantime, Sun Mian, on his way to the restroom, accidentally discovers the files he had been searching for in the warehouse behind Kang Ho's house. Realizing their significance, he immediately informs Ji Siuk. Kang Ho, catching a glimpse of them, recalls their presence as the individuals who had hidden in his closet during the terrifying encounter with the mysterious man. However, Sam Sik intervenes and assures the villagers that they are merely his co-workers, putting their suspicions to rest. Later that night, Menju returns home after the villagers have dispersed, with the intention of discussing her concerns about Young Soon's purchase of pesticides. Young Soon apologizes sincerely and promises Maiju that she will never repeat such actions. A few days pass, and Young Soon receives a call from Kang Ho's housekeeper, who wishes to hand her a secret letter left by Kang Ho prior to the accident. In the letter, Kang Ho reveals his unwavering love for his mother, sparking Young Soon's curiosity and leaving her yearning to uncover the truth behind his intentions. The following day, Young Soon receives a call from Jung Dae, Kang Ho's colleague at the district attorney's office, who reveals the connection between Kang Ho and Hei Young Tae Su's daughter. This new information deepens Young Soon's concerns as she realizes her son's involvement with powerful individuals. On the other hand, Wu Pia continues to threaten Ta Su, armed with the DNA test results obtained by Kang Ho. However, Ta Su remains indifferent to the threat and decides to sever ties with Wu Pia. In his office, Wu Biak receives a report from Ji Siuk and Sung Yan, accompanied by recent photos of Kang Ho walking. 
This gives Wu Biak a glimmer of hope, as he sees an opportunity to exert pressure on Tae Su once again. On another day, Young Sun surprises Kang Ho by inviting him to his studio for a photo session. She explains that she wants to have a photo ready for her funeral, teaching Kang Ho how to greet mourners who will attend the somber event. While this saddens Kang Ho, Young Soon realizes the importance of preparing her son for the inevitable. After some time, Young Soon and Kang Ho are seen enjoying a relaxing moment with cucumber masks on their faces. In the midst of their relaxation, a sudden realization strikes Young Soon as she contemplates the contents of Kang Ho's letter. She gets a hunch that her son may be keeping something important behind their family photos. Curiosity peak, Young Soon opens up the photo album and discovers a hidden memory card. A few days pass, and the villagers gather together for a meal, engaged in a lively discussion about Kang Ho's prospective marriage to another man's daughter. However, Young Soon remains unfazed by the news of her son's interrupted engagement. Instead, she confidently asks Yong Rak and the other residents to help in the search for a woman who would be willing to marry Kang Ho. On another occasion, Young Soon turns to Bang for help in learning how to operate a laptop, eager to uncover the contents of the memory card. With Bang's guidance, she successfully bypasses the password and gains access to Kang Ho's life story. As she reads through the records, she is deeply moved by her son's journey from college to becoming a prosecutor. Kang Ho's writings reveal his determination to seek justice for his father's death, obtaining an investigated record that implicates Ta Su and Wu Biak. Young Sum is overwhelmed with emotion as she realizes the sacrifices Kang Ho has made to pursue justice, including leaving behind the woman he loved. His pursuit of justice led him to Taesu's daughter, where he uncovered their involvement in Hashik's death. However, Kang Ho's plans to confront Wu Biak and protect Secretary Taesu came to a halt when he fell victim to an accident orchestrated by Taesu using Hei Young. Reading all these accounts, Young soon sheds tears and decides to burn all the evidence to protect Kang Ho from further danger. Kang Ho reluctantly complies with his mother's wishes, but secretly holds onto his prosecutor's ID card determined to continue seeking justice. When the village goes about its daily routine, news spreads that a fisherman has discovered a woman's body near the river, causing unease among the residents. Young Soon, haunted by her nightmare of Wu Biak's violent intentions towards Kang Ho, becomes increasingly worried about her son's safety. The following day, during a medical checkup, Young Soon decides it's time to find a suitable bride for Kang Ho and urges him to let go of his past life as a prosecutor. Despite Kang Ho's desire to reclaim his memories and continue seeking justice, he finds it difficult to defy his mother's wishes. On the other hand, Sam Sik faces financial difficulties and decides to sell the bag Song Ye had given him. He needs the money to repay debts to persistent creditors. On another front, Ji Siok and Sun Yan find themselves trapped inside Kang Ho's warehouse, searching for the files that Young Soon burned the previous night. However, upon hearing about the successful growth of their lettuce plants, they hastily leave the warehouse, causing damage to the door in their rush to join the celebration. As the night settles, Young Soon gathers Yong Rak and the other villagers to assist her in finding a future wife for Kang Ho. Yong Rak eagerly agrees to help, sharing in Young Soon's mission. Meanwhile at home, Yi Jin boldly confesses her love for Kang Ho, surprising Mai Ju when Gum Jo reveals Young Soon's plan for Kang Ho's arranged marriage. The following day, Song Ne and the others visit Young Soon's house, determined to give Kang Ho a makeover to enhance his appearance for his meeting with potential female candidates. However, despite their efforts, all the women reject Kang Ho, leaving Young Soon disheartened. But Yang Rak and the others provide her with words of encouragement, urging her not to lose hope. Before returning home, Kang Ho requests permission to visit Manchu, who works nearby the meeting place. He wants to show off his transformed appearance to her. Coincidentally, Mainju finds herself in a troubling situation with an elderly man on the verge of striking her. Fortunately, Kang Ho intervenes and protects her. Mainju claims that Kang Ho is her lover, a prosecutor, and the elderly man retreats. Kang Ho then saves Mainju from being hit by a passing motorcycle, and during this moment, memories of their past together flood back, leading Kang Ho to kiss her. From a distance, Young Soon observes the tender scene but refrains from scolding her son as she witnesses his happiness. Instead, she feels guilt for her past harshness towards Kang Ho, realizing the trauma it caused him. On a separate occasion, Kang Ho visits Mai Ju, who feels embarrassed in his presence. Their interaction becomes even more complicated when Kang Ho gently removes dried seaweed flakes from Mai Ju's lips. 
In the meantime, Young Soon's farm assistant, Andrea, offers to introduce Kang Ho to her nurse friend. Young Soon becomes excited by the prospect. Sometime later, Young Soon and the other villagers meet a woman named Huang, without including Kang Ho, fearing that he might spoil the meeting as he did in the past. In the village, Sam Sik tries to meet Kang Ho, who is alone at home. Sam Sik claims he needs money and asks for the jewelry that Kang Ho planned to give to his future wife. Without suspecting any ulterior motives, Kang Ho innocently gives Sam Sik the jewelry. Meanwhile, police detectives investigate the discovery of Su Hyun's body, which was found on the riverbank. The investigation unfolds. The focus shifts back to Kang Ho's matchmaking process. The meeting with Wang goes well, as she is impressed by Kang Ho's photos and videos and doesn't mind his current condition. Everyone is happy when Huang agrees to the arranged marriage. However, their joy is interrupted when Young Soon receives a call from the police station, prompting her and the other villagers to rush there immediately. At the police station, it is revealed that Sam Sik has been arrested for allegedly stealing Kang Ho's jewelry. However, Kang Ho arrives and defends Sam Sik, stating that he had willingly given him the jewelry. With Kang Ho's testimony, Sam Sik is released. Back at home, Kang Ho reveals his desire to become a prosecutor once his memory returns. This worries and upsets Young Soon, who visits Mai Ju and asks her to convince Kang Ho to accept the arranged marriage before his memories come back. Young Soon knows that Kang Ho will listen to Mai Ju more than her. Mai Ju, puzzled by Young Soon's urgency, finally learns the truth about her illness. On her way home, Mai Ju reflects on Young Soon's words and remembers how Kang Ho had left her when she was pregnant with Seo Jin and Yi Jin and how she had chosen to raise the twins on her own. As Manchu contemplates telling Kang Ho about their son, she witnesses him with another woman, which dampens her resolve. Upon arriving home, Manchu finally confides in Gunja about Siu Jin's father and the truth about Yi Jin's parentage. Gunja is deeply saddened and hurt by the revelation, and Manchu implores her daughter to keep it a secret, not wanting her to face further complications once Kang Ho and Young Soon discover the truth. The following day, Manchu is dressed elegantly and takes her two children somewhere. Meanwhile, Kango hesitates to get out of bed, adamantly refusing the arranged marriage until he receives a shock. His mother has collapsed. Kango rushes outside and finds Mai Ju in front of his house, urgently requesting her help to take his mother to the hospital. Mai Ju, who had initially planned to disclose the truth about Seo Jin and Yi Jin to Kango and Young Soon, sets aside her intentions and rushes Young Soon to the hospital instead. At the hospital, as they await the doctor's examination, Huang, who had accompanied them, shows a keen interest in Kang Ho, which leaves Mai Ju feeling upset. Elsewhere, Gunja pays a visit to Huna's house, where she learns about Young Soon's deteriorating health condition. Huna deeply regrets his past mistreatment of Young Soon. At the hospital, Kang Ho and Mai Ju receive the news from the doctor about Young Soon's cancer diagnosis. Kang Ho pleads with his mother to get up and go home promising to do whatever it takes to help her regain her health. Soon after, Gunja arrives at the hospital and scolds Mai Ju, forbidding her from getting close to Kang Ho. However, Gunja also shows her support by hugging Young Soon, expressing her concern for her neighbor's health. Meanwhile, Sam Sik meets a buyer for his mother's bag at a cafe, but the buyer demands a refund due to the bag being damaged. Fortunately, Sam Sik receives money from his mother, allowing him to reimburse the buyer. While on the bus back home, Sam Sik accidentally discovers the DNA test results file that Kang Ho had hidden in the bag. The next day, Young Soon feels disappointed when Huang cancels their match over the phone after learning about Kang Ho's feelings for Manchu. Young Soon visits Mai Ju's house to ask her to meet Huang and explain her relationship with Kang Ho. Gu Jia, who overhears the conversation, is upset that Young Soon doesn't understand how Kang Ho has affected Mai Ju's life. Menchu tries to calm her mother down by bringing her inside the house. In the meantime, Sam Sik meets Kang Ho to inquire about the DNA test file and memory card he found earlier. However, Kang Ho has no recollection of them, even after they view the contents of the file on the memory card, which reveals a conversation between Tasu and Kang Ho discussing getting rid of Tasu's secretary and her baby. Kang Ho is confused by the content of the conversation and feels worried about his past actions. Sam Sik asks Kang Ho not to tell Young Soon, as he promises to help Kang Ho uncover the truth. On another occasion, Kang Ho goes to his father's grave to find solace. Young Soon joins him and shares about Hashik, someone who resembles Kang Ho. 
She also reveals that she has prepared herself for the possibility that her time may be limited, which saddens Kang Ho. That night, Young Soon meets Kum Jia and humbly kneels down to apologize for her selfishness and for blaming Mindju for all the troubles that Kango has faced. Gunja, feeling sympathetic towards Young Soon, embraces her neighbor, and they both cry together. In another room, Manju is also moved to tears by the emotional scene unfolding between her mother and Young Soon. Another day, Ji Seok and Sung Yan find themselves being interviewed by a television station due to their success as lettuce farmers. Young Rak and the other villagers feel immense pride in their achievements. After the interview, Ji Seok and Sung Yan plan to travel to the city. Unexpectedly, Sam Sik appears and offers them a ride to meet Ta Su, who is now a counselor. This surprises them, and they wonder about Sam Sik's intentions in seeking out Ta Su. In the city, Sam Sik purposefully follows Hae Young to confront her with the DNA test results, hoping to receive money from her. However, Hae Young becomes irritated by Sam Sik's intentions and tears up the file. Undeterred, Sam Sik shows her a tape containing a conversation between Tasu and Kangho, which prompts a young to change her mind and consider giving money to Samsik. Unfortunately, as he young leaves to retrieve the money, Tasu's men, mistaking Samsik for one of Wu Biok's associates, kidnap him. Fortunately, Ji Seok and Sung Yan come to Samsik's rescue and save him from the kidnapping. In the meantime, Tasu grows increasingly frustrated with Wu Biok's relentless pressure, fueled by the incriminating footage possessed by Samsik. In another encounter, when Taesu meets Hae Young, she discovers that she was merely being used by him to harm Kang Ho. However, Hae Young feels powerless and afraid of her father, unable to take any action against him. A few days later, Taesu hosts Hae Young's wedding party, and Wu Biak arrives, seemingly unbothered by Taesu's presence. As they enter the event venue, Wu Biak discreetly hands Hae Young a photo of Kang Ho from the village leading her to make the impulsive decision to run away from her own wedding. Meanwhile at home, Young Soon invites Kang Ho to go out for a meal. Coincidentally, Hae Young arrived in front of Kang Ho's house, observing him as memories of her past mistakes flood her mind. However, before she can approach him, Taesu's men arrive to take her back home. While Kang Ho anxiously waits for a call from Samsik, he stumbles upon a phone in his suit pocket. However, before he can check the phone, Young Soon, who is ready to leave, urges him to join her immediately. While at Taesu's residence, he vents his anger on Hae Young, resorting to physical violence and even contemplating sending her to a mental hospital until the election is over. Shortly after, Taesu's spirits dampen further upon learning that the recently discovered body has been identified as his secretary's. On the other hand, Mai Ju is taking care of her daughter Yi Jin, who is running a fever. During their conversation, Yi Jin expresses her desire to see her mother happy with someone she loves, as she is not fond of her father who recently returned home and doesn't seem to genuinely love Mai Ju. Mai Ju is deeply touched by her daughter's words. During another encounter, Taesu approaches Wu Biak and proposes a deal. He will help Wu Biak eliminate Kang Ho by falsely accusing him of being the father of Su Haiyan's child. In return, Taesu promises to offer Wu Biak protection if he succeeds in the election. On a fateful night, Young Soon wakes up to the news of a fire at her ranch. Hurriedly, she and Kango rush to the scene only to witness the flames rapidly consuming the property. Kango courageously helps his mother escape by breaking a window, but in the process, he is struck by a falling log and loses consciousness inside the burning ranch. Meanwhile, Samsik, who has been secretly following Kango to the ranch, stumbles upon a group of mysterious men responsible for setting the fire. Determined to intervene, Samsik tries to fight them off, but is overpowered and rendered unconscious. Fortunately, Ji Seok and Sung Yan arrive in time to save Samsik and pursue the culprits. Simultaneously, Nong Rak and the other villagers gather to support Young Soon. Mei Ju, in a state of panic upon learning that Kang Ho is still trapped inside, attempts to enter the burning building to rescue him. However, the other residents quickly intervene, recognizing the danger and preventing her from proceeding. While Samsik, now awake, musters the strength to save Kang Ho by dousing himself with water and rushing inside the burning building. Within minutes, Kang Ho regains consciousness and, showing his selfless nature, carries the unconscious Samsik to safety. The following day, Mai Chu visits the hospital to take over the task of caring for Kang Ho, as Young Soon is being questioned by the police. The authorities suspect foul play in the fire due to the discovery of gasoline at the scene. However, Young Soon, 
wanting to protect Kang Ho, requests that the case be closed. While listening to the interrogation, Maiju urges Samsik to reveal the truth about the events surrounding Kang Ho and his dangerous predicament with Tae Su. Samsik opens up and shares everything he knows, emphasizing the grave danger Kang Ho is facing. After hearing Young Soon's story and learning about Kang Ho's struggles and love for her, Maiju shares the secret that Seo Jin and Ni Jin are Kang Ho's biological children. Young Soon asks Maiju to forgive Kang Ho for leaving her in the past as his actions were driven by his desire to avenge his father's death at the hands of Ta Su and Mu Biak. Kang Ho overhears their conversation and is overcome with emotion. Shortly after, the police arrive to arrest Kang Ho for the murder of Su Hyun. Kang Ho becomes agitated during questioning and denies, knowing the woman shown to him by the police. Yum Soon steps in to protect her son, requesting that the police not pressure him while he is still recovering. As a result, the interrogation is postponed, and Kang Ho and Young Soon are taken home by the police. Back at home, Young Soon is relieved to see that Kang Ho has regained his memory. Kang Ho asks his mother to keep it a secret and expresses his intention to continue investigating Hashik's death. He urges Young Soon to be cautious and stay with the villagers to ensure her safety. The following day, Kang Ho prepared himself for his mission of revenge. But before diving into that dangerous path, he came across Seo Jin and Yi Jin playing together on the village streets. Overwhelmed with emotions, Kang Ho couldn't help but hug his twin children. He apologized to them, admitting that he had mistakenly believed Maiju was leading a happy life with someone else. However, he felt grateful to discover that the twins were a precious result of his love for Maiju. Determined to mend broken ties, Kang Ho made his way to the nail art salon where Maiju worked. As soon as they met, Maiju poured out all her frustrations that had been pent up for so long. Kang Ho, understanding her pain, did his best to comfort and soothe her troubled heart. Meanwhile, Huna, having realized her past mistakes, sought out Young Soon to offer a heartfelt apology for her rude behavior. The villagers joined together to celebrate a joyous day for Young Soon, who was filled with happiness upon meeting her two twin grandchildren. It was a moment of healing and reconciliation. On different note, Ji Seok and Sum Yan successfully apprehended the person responsible for the fire that destroyed Kango's farm. They brought the culprit before Wu Biak, expecting justice to be served. However, to their surprise, the culprit turned out to be none other than Wu Biak's own errand boy. Shortly thereafter, Wu Biak's secretary delivered unsettling news about Kango's involvement in an incident where a car was pushed into the river. Learning of Kango's alleged betrayal by sparing Su Haiyan and her baby's life, Wu Blayok's anger grew even fiercer. In the midst of his plan, Kang Ho discreetly infiltrated the prosecutor's building, where he managed to borrow Jung Dae's car to proceed with his mission. Meanwhile, Mai Ju stumbled upon crucial evidence on Yi Jin's cell phone. It turned out that the phone had captured the moment when Hei Young maliciously spiked Kang Ho's drink with drugs, just before the unfortunate accident. Filled with urgency, Mai Ju promptly showed the incriminating video to Samsik who had been hiding in his room out of fear of attracting trouble. After some persuasion, Sam Sik finally agreed to venture out with Maiju to confront Hei Young. On another day, Maiju and Sam Sik arrived at Hei Young's residence, hoping to find her and expose the truth. However, their efforts were in vain as Hei Young was revealed to be secretly hospitalized, a fact kept hidden by Tae Su's family. In the meantime, Kang Ho crossed paths with Chung Dae, his former assistant in the office. Recalling the debt of gratitude he owed Kang Ho from their early days of working together, Jung Da willingly offered her assistance in the investigation. The story then takes us back to Mai Ju's relentless pursuit of Hei Young's whereabouts. Suddenly, a memory strikes her. She recalls Hei Young mentioning a hospital during their previous confrontation. Filled with determination, Mai Ju sets out to investigate further. While at the port, Kang Ho encounters a man named Dong Hyun, who had once helped him protect Su Haiyan and her baby. Dong Hyun recounts the tragic incident when their ship was intercepted by another vessel intent on causing harm. In a desperate attempt to save her baby, Su Haiyan chose to sacrifice herself by jumping off the ship, only to be discovered lifeless later. With Kang Ho believed to be in a coma, Dong Hyun decides to hide and protect baby Su Haiyan. Back at the hospital, Mai Ju and Samsik finally locate Hei Young's room by tailing the man who had previously held Mai Ju captive. Mai Ju disguises herself as a doctor allowing her to gain access to Hei Young's room, while Samsik pretends to be a patient in the hospital. With cunning tactics, Maiju manages to deceive the guards stationed outside Hei Young's room 
and confronts her directly about the purpose of their visit. On the other hand, back at home, Young soon receives assistance from Andrea, who disguises himself as a confined Kangho under a blanket. Their aim is to convince the police that Kangho's condition makes it impossible for him to be questioned, leading the authorities to eventually depart. In the midst of all the chaos, Huna's spirits soar as her song, inspired by Kangho, becomes a viral sensation. Meanwhile, Yong Hak, who happens to be at the tailor getting fitted for a new suit, finds himself approached by detectives inquiring about Kang Ho's memory loss. Intent on safeguarding Kang Ho, Yong Hak confirms the rumors, maintaining the facade that Kang Ho has indeed lost his memory. Back in the village, Young Soon and her neighbors find solace and enjoyment in their card game. However, Song Mei gets carried away and makes a thoughtless remark about sudden changes prompting Gu Jia to scold her and shed light on Young Soon's fragile condition. Understanding the gravity of the situation, Sung Mi apologizes to Young Soon, as doctors have revealed that her time may be limited. In another location, Kang Ho entrusts Zhang Dao with his car keys and a cell phone belonging to one of Wu Biok's defamation victims. Kang Ho is determined to uncover the truth surrounding all the past cases involving Wu Biok. Initially hesitant due to his previous experiences working alongside Kang Ho, where Kang Ho seemed to side with Wu Biok, Zheng Dei's doubts dissolve upon witnessing Kang Ho's genuine sincerity to expose the whole truth. Driven by this newfound conviction, Zheng Dei agrees to assist Kang Ho in his quest for justice. Inside his office, Wu Biok is convinced that Taesu is the murderer of Su Haiyan, and he devises a plan to eliminate Kang Ho in order to control Ta Su completely. This scheme leaves Ji Siok and Sung Nian, who have been protecting Kang Ho, puzzled and unsure of what to do. Back at the hospital, Mai Ju makes an earnest attempt to convince Hae Young to leave, as she fears Tae Su's wrath. Eventually, Hae Young agrees to go with Mai Ju, aided by Sam Sik. Together, they manage to smuggle Hae Young out of the hospital. Kang Ho arrives just in time, and they all scramble to escape the pursuit of Tae Su's henchmen. As they flee, the group finds themselves in a state of confusion desperately seeking a safe hiding place. Samsik suggests taking refuge in a hotel owned by a loan shark with whom he has had previous dealings. Upon arriving at the hotel, Kang Ho reveals his identity as a prosecutor, causing the loan shark to become fearful and compliant. He agrees to let Mai Ju and the others stay at the hotel temporarily. Meanwhile, Ji Siok and Sun Yun return to the village only to realize that they are being followed by Wu Biok's men, who are intent on eliminating them. They seek assistance from the villagers in apprehending Wu Biok's henchmen. At this moment, Ji Siok and Sung Yan come to the realization that Wu Biok wants to eliminate them because they possess damning knowledge about his criminal activities. The following day, Kang Ho confidently confronts Tai Su, who is hosting an event. Tai Su becomes apprehensive upon Kang Ho's unexpected appearance. As they converse, Tai Su inquires about Kang Ho's intentions. Kang Ho requests Tae Su's assistance in apprehending Wu Biok, the person responsible for Hashik's murder 35 years ago, by testifying against his crimes. Tae Su reluctantly agrees after learning that Hei Young is with Kang Ho. Sometime later, just as Wu Biok is about to flee the country, Ji Siok, who was nearly killed by Wu Biok, approaches him to offer an apology. However, Wu Biok dismisses Ji Siok, deeming him no longer of use. Unbeknownst to Wu Biok, Ji Siok has secretly recorded their conversation, infuriating Wu Biok. He attempts to kill Ji Siok by pushing him from the rooftop of a building. Fortunately, Kang Ho and the investigators arrive in the nick of time to rescue Ji Siok and apprehend Wu Biok for attempted murder. With Wu Biok behind bars, Kang Ho holds a press conference to announce the arrest and promises a thorough investigation into all of Wu Biok's hidden crimes. Young Soon and the others watch the broadcast visibly moved by Kang Ho's determination and resolve displayed on the television screen. On the day of the trial, the villagers eagerly make their way to Seoul, filled with excitement to witness the long-awaited trial of Wu Biok. Among them is Young Soon, her heart brimming with hope that the truth about Hashik's death will finally be unveiled. As the courtroom comes to life, Kang Ho takes the floor and begins reading the charges against Wu Biok, starting with the attempted murder of Ji Siok. But he doesn't stop there. With unwavering determination, Kang Ho opens the floodgates, revealing a string of other cases involving Wu Biok, including the heinous murder of Su Haiyan, Ta Su's secretary. To shed light on these matters, Tae Su is called as a witness. At that moment, 
Wu Blayok's world crumbles as Tai Su testifies, exposing a devastating truth. Su Haiyan had conceived Wu Blayok's child during their time working together. The weight of betrayal hangs heavy in the air, leaving Wu Biok feeling utterly exposed. In the meantime, Young Sun is filled with awe at Kang Ho's unwavering courage. Her heart swells with anticipation as she hopes to witness her son Kang Ho bravely unveil the entire truth before the court. During the trial, Kang Ho isn't done yet. In addition to Tae Su, he calls He Young to the witness stand. He Young bravely reveals Tae Su's attempt to kill Kang Ho and forces him to confess his misdeeds. However, Tae Su cunningly denies He Young's testimony claiming that she suffers from a mental disorder and presents medical records as evidence. Realizing that Taesu will stop at nothing to cover up his crimes with lies, Kang Ho unveils his trump card. He brings in Dong Hyun, along with Su Haiyan's surviving son. Dong Hyun testifies and the DNA test results confirm that Su Haiyan's son is indeed Taesu's child. Kang Ho exposes Taesu as the mastermind behind Su Haiyan's murder. Furthermore, he sheds light on the truth surrounding his own father's death, implicating Ta Su and Wu Biok from 35 years ago. Young Soon's heart fills with joy and pride as she witnesses her son's triumph in bringing justice to her late husband. The courtroom erupts with cheers as all of Wu Biok's crimes are laid bare. Now exposed, both Wu Biok and Ta Su must face the consequences for the multitude of crimes they have committed. That night, a joyous celebration takes place as the villagers throw a party to honor Kang Ho's success and celebrate Young Soon's birthday. Young Soon expresses her heartfelt gratitude to the villagers who have always been there for her and bids them a fond farewell. As the festivities wind down, Young Soon presents her wedding ring to Kang Ho and Mai Ju, expressing her joy at having such precious grandchildren like Seo Jin and Di Jin. Before retiring for the night, Kang Ho chooses to stay by his mother's side comforting her with soothing lullabies. He continues to sing to her until Young Soon peacefully passes away in her sleep. During Young Soon's funeral, tears stream down Kang Ho's face as he sings his mother's favorite song. The sorrowful melody touches the hearts of the other mourners, who join in softly humming as a final tribute to Young Soon's memory. In the following days, Sam Sik finds solace in visiting Hei Young, who is serving her prison sentence for her crimes. Meanwhile, Kang Ho and Mai Ju have successfully established their pig farm, and Kang Ho decides it's time to make their relationship official. As he waits for Mai Ju, he stumbles upon a letter tucked behind Young Soon's photo. In the letter, Young Soon expresses her gratitude and hopes for a better afterlife for Kang Ho's mother. She apologizes for her past mistakes and acknowledges her shortcomings as a mother. Overwhelmed with emotions, Kang Ho sheds tears, realizing the depth of his mother's love and goodness. In a heartfelt moment, Kang Ho finally proposes to Mai Ju, asking her to be his wife. The series concludes with a sense of hope and new beginnings for Kang Ho and Mai Ju as they embark on their journey together. The moral of the story is that even in the wildest of stories, remember to always double-check your suit pockets for forgotten phones because you never know what surprises might be lurking.